got that body. We need to get in there and drill those holes. I've got the drill bit too. I've got black hardware and it's got Mr. Glynn's cool mistress vintage telly pickups, brass saddles, bone nut. Uh, it's all good. Where are we at? What's going on? Thank you for the follow. Good to see you. Welcome on in. Who? Okay, so that's that guy there. But that's that's to show you that copper-looking um, red cedar when it when it really gets polished up. It, it really really looks copperish. Instruments as well as string instruments, they can be used. If you sit, if you watch the old flamenco guys playing, the old Spanish guys, they're doing all that stuff. They're going tip it up, tip it up, tip it up, ring, tip it up, tip it up, ring, 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 So uh, it's all good. Right, here we go. There's the back. Bring it up. That's not too bad. Okay. Let's uh, get that down there. So you can hear me. Alrighty. So, what do we need to do? We need to grab this body. Howdy, folks. Welcome on in. How y'all doing? Manny here from the Guitar Show in Sydney. On a Tuesday. Having a little break. And thought I'd have a quick stream. How am I doing? Miss Hollow Lou, I'm doing well. Thank you very much for asking. How are you doing? Good to see you again. Welcome on in, guys. Rage is in the house. Karen Day, how are you doing? Taco Tuesday, not quite. Actually, we're going to have tacos tonight. Um, I'm very, very stoked because my youngest daughter has just moved in with me for a little while. So that's good. Having her around is going to be very good. Um, keep Giorgio on his toes. How y'all doing? Terry, what's going on? Good to see you guys. Terry, exclamation 24HR, exclamation 24HR. Type that in now. <clears throat> there you go. Just wrote up something quickly just so people understand what's going on. You're doing good, ready for bed. Excellent. That's what we like to see. People getting ready for bed for sleepy buys. HR Rage, try that again. There you go. Beautiful. Okay, there's the body. We got a new neck done yesterday. I'm just taking off the clamps right here. And uh, we're going to check this guy out, trim up this fretboard, get uh, get some frets cut in, maybe do a carve. Let's have a look at how we're feeling. I'm going to try and fit this neck in and see what it looks like. So there's some overhang there. I'm going to saw that guy off. And then we're going to sand those sides uh, eventually. It's looking good, nice and centered. Dead straight, very good, nice glue job, no gaps anywhere. Got to trim this guy up. Let's try and fit that neck in and see what it looks like. Just want to check the test fit. That's the color we're going for. That slaty, dark, bronzy slate. You can see the, you can actually see the red gum shining through there. And uh, with that little pearl essence. It's going to look beautiful once it's done. Tom's in the house. Lisa's in the house. Everyone's in the house. There we go. 
Bingo. Nice tight fit. We always like the next beam. It's a pretty fretboard. I love that fretboard. It's going to look really good with this guy. Um, yes, indeed. So we've got to trim that guy up now. That neck bit is... We're going to do something very, very different here. Because it's a bolt-on neck and not a set neck, if it was a set neck, I usually have a bit of a, bit of a, a heel up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slope away. I'm going to carve this area out. We're going to drop this down. Drop this down and then curve that edge in there and blend it in. It's going to be a, a very, very different uh, rear, back, back shoulder, back of the neck design. So um, we have a bingo. Absolutely. Sir Didymus Engiwuk Pezik. That's a great name. I don't even know if I actually pronounced that correctly. I probably didn't, and I don't expect to ever. But this guy's coming along. So that neck fits really well. I'm happy with that. Happy as Larry, as they say, whoever he is. That's not going anywhere. I can pick that up. I can shake that around. It's not leaving. It's not making a move. But we can pry it out just like that. Good tight fit. Now what we need to do is um, we need to get this guy trimmed up. And I'm going to do that now, and uh, we're going to come back, and we're going to get some frets cut in here. I might cut the frets before I trim it up. I always like to cut the frets first. So let's get set for that. A little bit of therapeutic work. Put these clamps away before Terry loses her. Her OCD will make her go nuts if I don't put them away. You did 100%. Excellent. I knew I'd get it wrong. Hope no one got a screenshot. Not a good look. Texas, it is a very good look because that neck is so strong and that joint is so tight that nothing's going to give. Let me tell you. Let me tell you that for nothing. You're right. We shouldn't normally uh, we shouldn't do that. A lot of guys, you know, they try and prove how good their neck joints are by sitting all their routers and electrical tools on the end of their body and they're holding their neck like that. They can't be too big. Something's going to give. I'd love to be in that room when that thing goes plonk and everything falls, probably breaks their foot as well as their guitar. But, uh, yeah, it's not a good look. No, it's not. I do enjoy doing that every now and then, though. So it's a blazes with what it looks like. It's all about having fun. Ask Karen about that. She'll tell you about fun. I can do that again if you wish to get a clip of that. Uh, Tom, just let me know. I'll shake it around again for you if you'd like to get a, a bit of a close-up, so to speak, to coin a phrase. Shake it up, shake it up. It is a great fit, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it matters, but... You know, it doesn't have to be that that brutally tight. It can be a little bit on the loose side. And uh, as long as it's bolted in straight, that's all that counts. And there's good contact. As long as that heel and the sides, that's the important thing. Get that contact in here. As long as it's touching, it doesn't matter how tightly it touches, as long as you've got a nice uh, contact with the body of the guitar, you get that transfer of vibrations from the strings through to the through to the body and the neck and vice versa. So that's the main thing. Contact. The wood is a hard wood, very small grain. Speed of resonance, so speed of transfer is important. That's why we use hardwoods. A, they're hard. B, the speed of transfer. The harder the wood, the faster that transfers through. The steel would be a great guitar, but it would be a heavy guitar. So we don't use steel for that reason. <laughs> and for many other reasons. Dana's in the house. What's happening? I'm on baby. Please no. <laughs> Don't you worry, Honolulu. We're not going to break anything. And we won't do that again. 
Now I'm going to mark out these frets. I'm going to grab my little saw, set up our little bench here. Grab our little saw. We're going to use this very fine razor saw. This little baby guy here, this little dovetail saw. It's very fine, the blade. It gets us nice, fine slots. Cut this guy straight across here. Trim this guy off. Ebony's very hard. I might use the jigsaw later on that one. Um, I'll leave that. I don't have to trim that now. What I'm going to do is line this guy up now. And we're going to start cutting these saws. I'm just going to move this bench a little bit to give us some room. Uh, just need some leg room in here. Got a nice piece of coach wood that's going to make a nice little sanding block. Like that. Let's slot these guys here. So we're going to grab our square. I like to use the square. It just gives me a nice big flat straight edge that's got good contact and good good area to hold on to and get that gives me, and the thickness of the rule is great too it gives me confidence in slotting that freehand so we've got our and i don't uh i don't rub that up against there because that's tapered anyway so what we're going to do is we're going to cut the nut slot we're going to start at the nut slot here we're going to slot that guy down get that right down there marked just to get it started <clears throat> it's a little bit difficult on this side I might just move it over this way just to get a little bit more real estate purchase on on this neck here so I can hold on to that a little bit neater there we go What I might do is just quickly flick this over. I'm just going to move this camera to give you a better view because it's a little bit crappy where it is at the moment. Let's move that on this side of the bike. Get you nice and close. There we go, that's a little better. Get you right over the top. Now you can see what's going on a lot better. There we go, straight over the top now. Now we can see what's happening. Right. Alrighty then. Mark those scratches out. Get the right depth. We're going to get the final depth after we radius this. This is going to have a 12 inch radius. All we need to do now is just mark them. We mark these before we radius anything. That way we know where the lines are going to be. It's a lot easier to get the depth after we've done that. Uh, Uh, 
Okay, good night. Miss Lou, have a great sleep. I'll see you soon. Thanks for being here. So Didymus. So Didymus is exactly who he is and where he needs to be. Great, there's the nut slot, so that's that nut slot nicely cut. That's where that nut's going. We're going to now start with the frets, the proper. very lightly just scoring that surface and eventually the teeth bite and you and run you through that little groove that we create and then you can quite confidently freehand that to the depth that you want and I'm only just marking them out a couple of millimeters a couple of millimeters deep couple of sixteenths, one eighth maybe at the most, maybe not even that deep at this stage, just to get them marked in so I know where they are when I radius that guy. When we cut those in, we'll then trim it off and then we'll be ready to radius. We've still got to put the holes in here as well. So uh, I haven't forgotten that. I've got to mark those out as well in a second. I'm going to keeping this guy sharper than normal. I might give that a little bit of a curve in there. It's got a curve already. I might just take the edge off that just a little bit with the file, just take that sharp edge off there, round it over a little bit just to neaten it up. Do the same with these curves down here when we finish those up. But for now, we'll just carry on with these slots. See how we go. <sighs> Tusk, yes. Uh, there is a there is a synthetic tusk that they call tusk. Real tusk is not, uh, ivory is no longer allowed. It's illegal internationally. Um, we do use ca camel bone and we do use cattle bone. So um, cattle, beef cattle and um, buffalo and um, camel bone is used for nut and saddles. Oyster shell, mother of pearl. And abalone is still used under license. So there are certain suppliers that you can buy from that are licensed to do that. Obviously, the licensing is important because theoretically, the cost of the license goes back into preserving preserving that, uh, that species through um, protection programs and farming programs and ecological programs. So it's very important to harvest. It's very important to harvest your materials, but you've got to replace them. You've got to ensure the longevity. That's what I call true sustainability. Sustainability, people say, oh, you mustn't hunt and you mustn't fish and you mustn't do this and you mustn't do that for sustainability. Well, if you don't do anything to effectively keep the numbers under control, you actually destroy the ecological system. You need to farm and you need to hunt and you need to collect and gather because that promotes promotes growth, regrowth, and reproduction. And that's what keeps species going. Not the fact that you just try and protect every, every single individual member of that species. You can't do that. You cull the weaker ones. You cull the older ones. Um, in an ethical way, of course. I'm not just saying go out and randomly do all that. But I'm, I'm a firm believer in doing things properly. If you're going to talk about sustainability... You need to understand what that really means. It doesn't mean save every member. It means ensure that the species continues to exist 
and in some cases increase the numbers if possible and if justified. That's what sustain it, sustaining, keeping it there, keeping it consistent and conserving it. Preserving it, and sometimes I like to preserve things in jars as well. <laughs> Just a pun on words, a play on words. But yeah, so I'm all I'm all up for using bone and using abalone, but you better have a plan to keep using it. Because what we've seen in the past, and we should, we've learned from the past, is if you don't have a plan and you use it, it doesn't. You run out of it and you can't use it again, and the world's a, a worse place for it. But you can use it, and you should use it, as long as you know how to gather, how to collect. That's my rant for the day. Terry, can you throw up? Oh, yeah, thank you, you've already done that. That's the way I like to uh, to roll. Terry does my thinking for me. She's, uh, she's uh, projecting my rant, emote my rant. My rant mood. It was a quite a, it was quite a gentle rant. You must admit. <laughs> In the jar, Terry. Whatever I cook for you will be delicious. Don't you worry about that. It'll be real food. It'll be ethically sourced. and expertly prepared, not by me. This fretboard is gonna look something else. I do usually use picturesque fretboards like this to paint a scene or to lay out a scene. There's one I did on a Telecaster, an old Western style one with a engraved um, skull, cow skull or a longhorn skull on the back. A couple of um, feather earrings hanging off the horns. Um, a little bit of a, a little bit of a Native American feel to it. Um, and on the front, I had this desert scene on the fretboard. We had um, we had the desert pretty much a nice flat, dark area, and there was quite mountainous and a couple of hills in the background like this. We had this sky, lighter sky, cloud sort of scenario going on there. The reverse also works when you're doing seascapes. You can have that as the water, and you can put things like marine animals jumping out of the water, a sailfish on the 12th, or a swordfish on the 12th thread, or a shark, or a dolphin, or something like that. You've got birds in the air, or you've got nothing in the air. But on the desert scene, we had birds of prey, eagles and uh, vultures and things flying around at each fret marker as a fret marker. I actually got, that's, uh, I gave that guitar away to a friend of mine, but I actually have some photos of that. I might get those photos and put them up. I used to love doing that. Um, I still do love it. I just don't have time anymore. And I should make time because some of those pieces, some of those ideas need to go into fretboards, I think. Don't you think, Terry? Would you agree? Okay, next one. Slow, nice and steady, nice and slow. Get a groove going. Things speed up as we get going. We get the feel and the gist, as they say. Jam made from a fruit tree struck by lightning. Well, you never know. Yes, I agree. Terry would agree. She likes that stuff. Check out Terry, guys and girls. Big shout out for Terry. Dana, can you give Terry a big shout out? Once she starts getting enough shout outs and follows, she can start streaming. Terry's awesome. 
She's a good little uh, a good little novice artist. She calls herself a little novice. I think she's magnificent. She does some great stuff with a paintbrush and some canvas. Hey, Mav, what's going on? My light bulb is flickering. It's not because the light bulb is dying. They're LEDs, but I think the switch is a ca cactus. I'll just have to adjust that in a minute. So we're not we're not standing in a lightning storm, if that's what it looks like. Gio had a win on the weekend, Terry, just for your information. One nil, they got up. Their first win in the trial series. The real competition starts in March. But he's had three trials, two losses and a win, but they're getting better as they go. And the team hasn't been settled yet. We're trialing a couple of new players and things and a couple of younger guys too. So it's a bit of a, that's what trials are for, I guess, your pre-season sort of games just to get you warmed up. Ha! <laughs> Nothing to see here. Move along. Ha! Huh. Okay, we're down to one, two, three, four, five, six, that's seven. We've got about 17 to go. Huh. They, will, they will speed up as I go. Getting there. Geo, 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 absolutely, Mav. He's playing magnificently. He's playing really well. And I'm not just saying that. Let's take a break, have a drink. <laughs> Hope you guys are having a great day. Great evening, great morning, depending on where you are. Great afternoon if you're in Sydney. Cheers, big ears. He's looking up your old address. Very nice. Thank you. Okay, carrying on from where we left off. The big cheer. Terry, I bet you can't wait to polish this guy up with um, with the grits, to call the grits out. It's going to look quite amazing once we get this uh, get some some colour through here, some uh, some shine through here. I use this guide when I finalize things. We set the fence at the right height, which is about there. I have got this guy marked out. Let's give you that. So that's the depth of the frets, about an eighth of an inch. So you can see that, that that edge there stops that blade from going any deeper. So we get the right depth uniformly and consistently. Okay, and that's when we get the we get this guy finished off. We cut and saw until we hit that plastic guide. Like that, and then it doesn't cut any deeper because that stops that. That stops the edge from.
cutting it any deeper. Once we reach that plastic edge, that's pretty much as deep as we're going to go. So you can set the depth with this little depth gauge, but for now we're just scoring these guys and getting them in, and I find it's quicker and easier with this little guy here. Um, it's actually an English one. This is a this is an English Sheffield steel fret cutting saw. Um, the Japanese swords that you're talking about are these guys here, the razor saws. I've got one. I'll just I'll show that to Sir Diddums. Sir Diddley Squat. The Diddle Daddles. You're thinking about these guys. Japanese razor saws. And that's these guys here with the bamboo wrapping. And these guys, uh, this is a little bit thick for the fr for frets, um, but it does, has it got a, a straight cut and a cross cut blade, two teeth patterns, and it raises and rips through stuff like an absolute cyclone, like a hurricane. It uh, doesn't muck around and makes light work of it. So, yep. Swords, they're the ones. Karen, you'll never forget that day when I accidentally called them swords instead of saws. Swords came out of my mouth. Ha! Huh. Very funny. That's the one, absolutely. That's the one. One. Is there a one command? I didn't even know that was a command, Terry. What the heck? What are you guys been doing? Cutting slots is what we do. Cutting slots is what we like. Dana, is Kansas City celebrating? Trouble. Ha! Very funny. God, there's more commands written by those two ferals than I ever wrote in the whole two years that I've been streaming. Swords of a different nature. Well, there you go.
まして。Should have heard the screaming in the neighborhood. Huh! And that was from your house. Yes, absolutely. You can, so did he, so did him you can use a sword as anything. You know the old saying, the pen is mightier than the sword? Well, I can rebut that by saying the sword is a pen. You can write anything with a sword just as well as you can with a pen. So the pen is not mightier than the sword. It's messier. The sword is messier as well as, uh, as mightier than the pen. Getting there, just a few to go, maybe 10, 3, 6, 9, maybe 12. Righty then. Slow and steady wins the race. Just ask me. Nearly there. Just about there now. We've got a few to go. Leslie, what's going on? Symbols. Ta-da! More cowbell.
Right, moving right along, almost there. Speak of the devil, I ring the cowbell and Lisa pops in. How you doing, Lisa? More cowbell. Just about there, three, six, seven to go. Six to go, I actually cut that end off as well. So there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six stretch to go. So it must be 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24. Okay, beautiful. I've been quiet lately. Multitasking is no fun. Trying to solve a QuickBooks anomaly for a week already. Wow, QuickBooks. Accounting software. Not my favorite type of software. Not anyone's favorite type of software. QuickBooks, I'm so glad that life is over for me. I have no money, therefore I have no need to count any money. So that suits me fine, as they say. Just about there, folks. Four to go, three to go, and one end to cut out. Terry, there's no fun in that. I'd rather be doing your audit with one hand and blindfolded and without a calculator. Terry, you and your audit. It's the bane of everyone's existence, that audit even those that aren't even there doing it, especially those that aren't there doing it. Have you finished your audit yet, Terry? Or is it still going? Just out of curiosity, thought I'd ask. It's like the mother of all audits, that one. Terry wouldn't like it if I ordered it, or maybe she would. Aha! The US has been done for a week, then the tax auditors show up. Damn those tax auditors! They're the ones that you hate the most.
I actually read something just randomly the other day, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, Terry. Maybe I misunderstood it. I don't think I did, but I'm going to ask someone that probably knows a little bit more about it than I do. I read an old IRS document that said, and I believe this, is to, this to be true because I've studied a little bit around the jurisdiction around tax laws and stuff, just to get my head around and understand how, how the government and how certain private entities masquerading as a government or working with the government, how they get around to working these things out. And I read an old IRS auditor or IRS agent's notes, and they said, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I'm just taking a, trying to recall what, how I interpret it. Lodging a tax return is voluntary. But once you lodge it, you're bound by that report. So if you lodge it and you volunteer that information, then you are almost like accepting a mandate. You have a contract with the government and you're then liable uh, to the outcomes of that contract. But back to my original point, lodging a tax return is not compulsory, it's voluntary. Now, I might have that wrong. Maybe I misunderstood. Uh, you'd probably be able to clarify that. Maybe. I'm not sure that you know the answer, but I'm guessing you know more about it than I do. I found it interesting anyway, but I can believe that because the tax department here in Australia, as is the IRS in the United States, doesn't really have jurisdiction over you. They're a private entity. They're a corporation acting as an agent of the government. They're not actually lawmakers, but it's interesting to see how they come up with that. And taxation law is a whole new bundle of fish. But um, it's interesting. I found it quite interesting that that was the case, although it doesn't surprise me. Terry's either collapsed and fainted from laughter or she's gone away to look that up and verify it. One or the other. The beauty of cutting the slots before we trim the, net, the uh, fretboard is also sometimes as you pull through because of ebony is so brittle, you get some chipping on the ends of the fretboard. But once you trim that down, those chips are gone and those cuts are clean. So that's another reason why I do it though. I will check it out though. <laughs> the bandits, yeah, they're, they're pretty much like that. As I said, it came from an ex, uh, a former IRS agent who now is, who now consults and does speaking tours to business people and accounting staff. Of, of firms and you know even mum and dad companies, small businesses, um, about that situation, about their tax um, their tax rights and their, their tax laws. I found it interesting. It's pretty fascinating because I do believe taxation is theft. But regardless of what I think, um, regardless of what I think, and I could tell you what my plan would be for a nation and how to fund certain things. This needs to be cut out, this last bit, so I'm just going to mark it. I'm going to grab a saw and cut that straight off there. We're done with the frets. We're going to trim the edges now. That's what I'm going to do with uh, our friend, the saw. Okay, so let's move this body. I'll grab a little, uh, I'm going to use that Japanese saw to show Sedidims or whatever his name was. What was his name again? Sedidilot, Sedidilot, Sedidly Deadly, that, Diddly Dudly Did, something like that. I'm just going to use this guy and just cut straight through there. A little bit of an overhang. I'm 
this will make light work of this. Clamps! Terry, I should clamp this up, don't you think? I should just do myself a favour, as Terry would say, and clamp it up. And when they say voluntary, it ain't like you'll get away with it not entering yours voluntarily. Yeah, Leslie, that's a funny, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I get your point, but I think that the wording voluntary means you need to give consent. And it could be argued in court. If it went that far, you could argue the case in court if you knew your statutes and the definition of the wording in those phrases like consent and um voluntarily and, and those definitions were clearly outlined in the in the statute as to what their effect was you could argue that in court I think you'd have a case I know cases have been won in Australia based on jurisdiction people have argued with uh, the tax department around they don't have any jurisdiction over free citizens because they're not a governing body they're only working hired by the government to do a job on behalf of the government, but some of the laws that, that come up and some of the rules they make don't seem to be, they don't seem to have, I believe, um, the authority to make those calls. And that's where they've challenged it, on, on what authority do they make those calls. I find it fascinating. I love the whole process of, um, of sort of breaking down laws and understanding how they're really meant to work and how some, a lot of them are so misinterpreted. It does make light work of things. That saw is awesome. Uh, I'm going to use it now to cut the rest of this guy. I may as well use that saw. I feel like a little bit of a, a little bit of manual work there. There's a bit of control there. It gives me control. I need another clamp though. I'd say Terry would be happy if I had another clamp. Use a couple of clamps, I think. Terry, are you are you in agreement? Jewel Terry, twenty-five. Ha! Dana's Dana's got the jewel game going. That's so funny. Won the jewel. Ha ha! Beaten by. See, Kansas can't do wrong this week. They got it all going on. Miss Dana, she's got it all going on this week. Can't get anything wrong. Okay, let's cut this guy straight down here, close to the edge without overshooting it. Uh, and then we'll sand the rest, of course. It's so dense. Looking good, very close to the edge.
It is rock hard, this sun. It's uh, ebony is really, really tough. Let's try and cut some of that away. Come on. Very nice. make more room for myself. You don't worry about little chips like that here on the edge because this is all getting carved away. So uh, sometimes it jumps up and bites the edge. Nice big chunky pieces of black ebony. Good little swizzle sticks. They also make very good little dots um, for fret markers. We can actually shape those and make little dots. They're rock hard and they polish up nicely. Warby, what's going on, brother? Texas, no, no bandsaw. I like doing things by hand. The bandsaw wouldn't make this fun.
I will use the bandsaw for down here because I don't want to scratch this horn here. So I'll quickly go and do that to Texas's point. Okay, while I was there, I did the other side to save me cutting that by hand. So we've got this trimmed up. I'm going to go and sand this now. Get the edges sand. So I'm going to move this camera for you. Let's have a look at that. So that's a nice neck. It's going to end up being a very nice neck. I like the, I like the colours and I like the variation. It's uh, very different. All the previous tat disappeared. That's a shame. Yeah, chat's a bit funny. Maybe they're listening in on all those things I was saying about the the revenue service. We are being monitored. We are being watched. So, to all my good friends down in the local government and the federal government, hi guys, welcome. It's probably Mav. Okay, let me uh, quickly have a look at what's going on here. Um, Let's move this camera outside so you guys can have a good look. Give me two secs. Ah, oh, maybe not. Maybe not because it is raining. So we'll wait till the rain stops before we go outside. I didn't realize it was raining. What I'll do is I'll just sand it in here. I'll probably pop it down. Take a slip. Pranks the fan fan, thank you for the follow. Nice name, by the way. You like to be called Prank for short? Okay. Let me quickly sand these edges. Actually, no, I won't sand them in here because it's a bit too terrible. What I will do is we'll get the body up here um, and I'll finish that sanding. I'll finish this sanding uh, later outside but what I want to do is fit this neck measure the scale length get those uh, get that routing done for those pickup cavities so we can prepare for the carb or the body so while we wait for the weather to clear up and we can finish the edges on this guy uh, we still have this cut out to the right length we've got these marked out so essentially we know where the nuts going we can actually work out where the 
uh, scale length and the bridge goes, and then um, at least we can mark the the bridge pickup and the neck pickup and get those routed out. So let's do that. Let's move that over here. Like so. Here's our body. There's the green beast, the green and black metal beast. Okay, we're going to get that guy chugging along soon as well, but uh, I want to get this, this guy done ASAP as well. So let's put this neck back in. And that's a nice tight fit, very tight fit. It's a good fitting neck. You can see that there. That joint is pretty tight in there, and uh, that's not going. That's not going anywhere. I can shake that around. Nick, Tom doesn't like me doing this, so I'll do it again. That ain't going anywhere. What it will allow me to do though is measure that scale length and get that marked out before we we do the routes here before we do the carve, so that we've got a nice flat area to work with with the router. We get this straight edge down here and check the alignment of that neck. Oh dear, it is absolutely almost dead straight. I've just got to tweak it a little bit. That's fine, but it's good enough to get the good enough to get the uh, the scale length in there. So we're measuring from the zero marker or the back of the nut or the middle of the nut, and we go to 25 and a half inches, just to give us an estimate of where this bridge is going. The bridge is going right there. So we can measure that down here as well. Draw a line through there and just have some an estimated spot. The bridge is roughly sitting there, which leaves us how much room does it leave us? Actually, that's not that's not technically correct. Let me have a look at this again. Let me double check that measurement again. Okay. Helps if I use the right side. Okay, those spreads are cut spot on. Okay. Bridge, let me grab that bridge, which is a little hardtail number. Going to sit there. And we've got about a quarter inch of play to bring that backwards and forwards to uh, get the uh, intonation correct. That's where the bit. So okay, we've got one one guy there. Where's that ring? Pick up ring just to get the spacing right on this neck. Okay, that can come up a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that up a little bit just a touch. Bring that to there.
I'll grab the template, wherever that guy is. Should be here somewhere. Get that template box out. That's where that guy's going, right there. Line it up. Grab a sharp pencil. One pickup. Just going to check the measurement. Just double checking the spacing between those two pickups. There's a, uh, a slight range. I just want to make sure, make sure I get them right. Two and a half inches, 65. Yep. Two and a half inches. Okay, two and a half inches. Let's go down. Two and a half inches from this guy. about right. Here's the other pickup. It's a bit too far back. I'm going to move, move that up a little bit. So let's mark out where the bridge ends. About there. That means the pickups. Get that guy there. Get that ring in there. Okay, that's where we want it.
there we go neck bridge bridge okay we can route these two guys out now so i got to drill some holes in here first i'm going to get it down to a certain depth Got my uh where is that guy? Is he on the drill press? Yes he is. Let's take you over to the drill press, let's get those holes done and then we'll route those out. So we'll flick that over. How you doing guys and girls? Welcome on in. Uh, what have we got? Hey Goth, what's going on man? Good to see you. Welcome on in my friend. Thank you for the shout out Terry. Yes, our good friend Goth needs to be shouted at. Shout it out, I should say. Okay, that's the neck. Gopher. Coachwood. Ebony. With lots of streaky stuff going on. Body. Mahogany. Flamed. Red gum. Okay, you can see the flames in that, that little guy. It's going to be quite clean. That's the colour we're going for. Okay, black hardware, chambered, 1F hole, two controls, so EMG pickups, humbuckers, hardtail bridge, one volume, one tone, one three-way. And we're just about to go and drill these holes out here. So I'm going to move that camera and take you guys in there. Get my extension cable. Extension cable. This is a job for extension cable. Right camera out. So I'll plug that in the other side and we'll get going for that. See how that looks. Let's have a look at what that looks like. Flip that over. Bing, there we go. Let's get this guy over. going to adjust the height. Let me uh, turn on that volume. Let me turn on that other mic so you guys can hear me in that room. Where's that mic? Bench mic. Bench mic. It's on. Okay, cool. It should be all right.
alien. The alien face. Yes, you never know, Leslie. It could be uh, with Morticia Adams' hair. Ah, I get it now. Okay. There's our guy. Um, the microphone is on. Let's go and drill those holes. Pilot holes. We need to come down 20 millimeters. Actually, a little bit more. 25. I'm going to come down. 25 mil. So let's uh, measure that down there. The 25 mil mark. I've got markers on that drill. 25 is at that second line. That's good. I know where that's got to go. And that's where the drill starts. If we bring that down, it goes to tw almost there. Okay, not bad. Let's put that down a little bit. Go there, maybe. And that's it. That's 25. Perfect. Okay, we've got to get to there. Good. Okay, so now we've got to drill this guy. Just going to lower that just a fraction. Put that guy in there. And then we're going to drill, drill this guy down least to get it uh, hogged out like that. Hog that out so that we don't have to route as much. What's that look like? Yep, you can see that guy there. Let's go. Uh, do I need a mask? Terry, do I need a mask? I probably do need a mask. Let's get one on anyway. Can't hurt. Can it? The rain's starting to come down now. We've got a bit of rain going on outside, so that's a shame we can't sand that now. But it's okay. All right, let's go.
Let's flick over, get that camera back in here. There we go. Got a hole in there. Just going to wipe this down and um, let me just change this bench mic camera off. There we go. Don't get as much of an echo. Wipe that down. We'll get some magic tape. We'll put that template down. Uh, we'll start with the first. Got to clean that up. So let's get some double sided tape on there. That's a nice cap. Thanks, man. It is a nice cap. The back wood is um, mahogany. Mahogany, Texas. And the cap is Australian red gum. Thank you, Willie, for pointing that out. I was just paying, focusing on my drilling and not seeing any comments in the other room. This template's getting a bit raggedy. I need to get a new one. I've got some little chips in that. I do know where they are, so I don't uh, I freehand over that section to neaten up the cavity. nothing like going through life with a neat cavity. You don't want a messy cavity, let me tell you. enough on here just to give it a nice stable nice stable grip so it doesn't flip around line that guy up That ain't moving. We will get some clamps up here just to keep Terry happy. Isn't that right, Terry? Grab some stability. Just got a little bit of stability. Put it the other way so I don't stab myself in the proverbial. Let's grab our router, which is right here. Got to change that bit. Put that uh, round bit in there. Medium length. Don't need it to be that long, probably too long. I've got a shorter one. Let's do a couple of passes. Yeah. Put that 
going in. Okay. It's going to take us down about halfway. We can see. I'm going to clean it up. Masks, gloves. Yep, no politics on this stream, guys. Leave that bullshit for other streams. What is going on? Oh, gotcha. Okay, take that off. Log it in. Okay, we're good to go. Terry! Where are my glasses? Here they are. Okay, let's hit it. Safety first, exactly. Probably a bit loud, I'm just going to turn that off. Okay.
we've got to do this side now. So back onto the disc.
All right. I just realized that I was muted all that time. Now, what I did ask before I ran up to get something from the postman was, what do you think about these guys? Was I muted? I think I was. I think I'm back now. I thought I'd uh, unmuted it, but obviously I hadn't. So we've got these guys here. Those speed, speed knobs. Um, I tend to like these guys here because they match the bridge. Clamp it. I don't need a clamp. We're done. We're done with the. Uh, we're done with this guy. Which one do you think, uh, Terry? Which one do we think? We're going to go with these. These rings just arrived, so I'm happy about those. Uh, very happy about those. Here's the pickup for this guy. BMGs. Where are they? Here they are. Let's get these babies out and have a good look, shall we? Find the bargains. Better find them, they're bloody expensive. They're in here. And I've got them stored somewhere and I've hidden them away. But that's okay, we'll find them one day. They're in there. But those EMGs will go into, uh, into here. How many clamps do we need? All of them. We don't need any more clamps. Okay, we're good. So that guy's done, and the only thing left is, well, I've run out of time. So tomorrow we're going to carve this guy. We're going to step that in. There's one, two, three, four, five layers. One, two, three, four, five layers. We're going to step that in. Terrace that up, sand that all down, get these sides nice and round, and then we're pretty much, uh, pretty much done. We then start uh, finishing, getting that colour on there, which will be interesting. Once we sand that, we'll get that sanded to about 400 and then get the colour on there, three, 320 or so. So, Terry, can you hear me? Give me a one if you can hear me because I don't know if my mic is working or not because no one's responding to the things I'm telling them. Am I muted? I was muted before. I don't think I am now. Yeah, something's not working properly. Anyway, I'm done for the day, so I'm going to call it quits. Let's see who's on. And I'm going to give this a go because my, my uh, raids haven't been working very well. So I'm going to see if I can go back to Hank. Uh, and see what I can get out of him, if I can actually successfully get there. There's something really laggy going on. I mean, the video quality is okay, I think. It looks all right from my end. Um, I'm just not getting you guys responding on the chat. Now I've got to wait. Actually, no, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it this way. Uh, okay, I didn't know. Okay, I didn't notice anything come up on the. Um, I didn't notice anything come up on the. Uh, on the doobie whacker. Let me uh, see what happens here.
Yeah, the chat sort of died. So um, that's why I haven't been able to get those messages. Sorry, guys. Oh, what's going on here? Let's see if I can raid Hank Bud. Where's my chat gone? Holy smokes. Yeah, it's weird. It's it's gone crazy. Can you hear me, Dana? Just put a one in there if you can hear me. Yeah, I'm still on, Lou. You're still awake. You're awake. What happened? I thought you were gonna go to sleep. Go get some sleep. Man, I can't even get this chat working. Seriously. There's something really crazy going on, and that's with Twitch. Okay, I'm going to call it quits, guys. I don't know what's happening, but um, bye for now. I'll see you tomorrow.